Do you have to keep refilling your boiler to keep it working? If so, then this video is for you. Basically, if you have to keep refilling your system, whether it's once a day or every couple of months, you have a leak on your system. I'm going to show you in detail where you can find those leaks and what you can do to fix them. I'm going to show you photos and videos which I've taken in customers' homes which identify exactly where those leaks are. I'm also going to explain why regularly refilling your boiler is extremely bad for it and how you will be destroying the life of your boiler by constantly refilling it. If you've been topping up your boiler more than a couple of times a year and you're wondering is this correct then stay watching and I'll explain. But stick around to the end and I'll show you my top tip on how to identify those pesky leaks. Also what you can do if you cannot find a leak on your system. My name is Mark Ballard and I've been a gas registered engineer for over 20 years. The aim of my channel is to help you with your central heating and plumbing. Whether it's just basic operation and maintenance or whether you want to do more advanced fault finding, installation and repair. If you're new to my channel then don't forget to click subscribe for more help videos. You can click like, share me with your friends or if you have a similar story you can leave it in the comments below. And I'd like to say a really big thank you to everybody who's left a donation in my toolbox fund. That is really appreciated. Right, now let's get cracking and I'll show you what I found. After finishing making this video, I found it's a little longer than I was intending. But please do stay watching because if you're trying to find that leak, it's all really relevant. Especially the part on constantly refilling your boiler. So starting off with the number one fault which I find which is the PRV which stands for pressure relief valve. This is a valve which is normally inside the boiler and it opens up and lets out excess pressure if it gets too high. Now you can see this boiler is operating now it's about uh, half a bar and then uh, when the customer turns the boiler on and the system gets hot and the pressure rises you can see that the pressure has risen right round and it's getting near to the red which is round about three bar. And then the pressure relief valve will open up and let out that excess pressure. When we go outside we can see that the boiler is operating and this is the pressure relief pipe. This is the pipe that lets out the excess pressure. And there we go, look central heating water is dripping out so the customer is now losing pressure on their system. Now it will probably mean that the PRV will need to be replaced because they're not designed to open and close. Also the expansion vessel which is normally inside the boiler and would normally take up the expansion of the central heating water this may need to be repressurized to one bar or possibly replaced okay now I've also got another boiler here this is a similar thing this is a Valiant Ecotech boiler um, and you can see again I've been running the boiler the pressure is right up high so we go outside and we can see the pressure relief pipe is dripping water and you can see the staining on the roof there where it's been dripping for some time so I had to do exactly the same with this boiler again I had to replace the um, PRV the pressure relief valve and also recharge the pressure vessel and then it was all working fine again. So in that last clip I said that I'd uh, fixed the boiler it turns out the customer gave me a call about a week and a half later and uh, they said it lost pressure again it turns out this pressure vessel was faulty so I've had to uh, go back replace that for a new one and, uh, and it's all been fine since. Um, I'm going to do a separate video for this I'm going to cut this in half and I'm also going to see if I can identify the leak so if you're interested in know what's inside these and uh, where they might be leaking from then you can click the link in the description below and uh, here's another boiler this is the Valiant Turbomax boiler this is an older boiler but it's still uh, working okay apart from again on this one you can see that the pressure is up uh, it's above the uh, two uh, out of the green and when the boiler gets hot it's going to go around to uh, nearer the red and underneath here we've got the pressure relief valve so this is the valve that's opened up and let the excess pressure out there's a little pipe going out through the wall now this uh, scenario is slightly different uh, because um, this wasn't down to the uh, pressure vessel this was down to the fact the tenant had left the filling loop open so the boiler has been constantly topping itself up and over pressurized it which has resulted in the same uh, thing the uh, water is now dripping out of the uh, PRV the pressure relief pipe outside and you can see the rust on the pipe there so that shows it's been doing this for some time so now I've repaired the boiler. You can see that the uh, pressure now is where it should be, roughly about one and a half bar. And when we look underneath the boiler, we can see that I've replaced the uh, PRV. So we've got a nice new one on there. And I've also replaced the filling loop because uh, hopefully the tenant won't leave this, this one open because it's fairly uh, straightforward with the valves. 
if you want to know more about filling loops then you can look in the description below where you'll find a link to my video on filling loops and how to use them. I've just shown you three videos where the boilers are installed on the outside wall and the pressure relief pipe is directly behind them. Now quite often these days boilers are installed in the center of the property and then the pressure relief pipe will be either installed into a condensing pump or it will still be run to the outside wall. If it's run to the outside wall it's then a question of trying to find it. I've seen them installed in all sorts of places in between extensions, into hedges, into the gutter. They should be installed in a visible location so have a good look around on the outside of your house and see if you have water dripping out for your pressure relief pipe. If I can't find the pressure relief pipe on the outside wall I would then look to disconnect it at the valve on the boiler so I can confirm that it is the valve which is leaking and that's where the boiler is losing pressure. I said earlier that the pressure relief pipe may also be run into a condensing pump. Now there's a picture here which isn't very clear but it shows there's a white box underneath the boiler. This is a pump and it'll pump away any water which is run into it. So the uh, condensing pipe and the pressure relief pipe are both run into this unit. Now if you find this unit is running really frequently then it may be that there's water dripping into there but I still look to confirm by maybe disconnecting the pipe to see if there's water dripping into that unit and that's where you're losing your pressure. Moving on to the second most common on leak which I find which are radiator valves. They're a common source of leaks on central heating systems. I'm going to show you the difference between two different radiator valves I have here. So this one here is a standard radiator valve. You have a nut which holds the whole valve together and then quite often you'll find they will leak out of the spindle. Um, so if you ever get water coming out of there there's not much you can do. You could try putting some silicon grease on and wind it up and down and that might stop it from leaking but be very careful because it might make it worse and in general all we do is replace these radiator valves. Then we have this style of radiator valve. Now this style of radiator valve has a gland nut on it and uh, when we take it apart you'll see there's an additional nut on it uh, which allows you to tighten that nut up and which clamps down onto the shaft and stop it from leaking. So we have the same nut there which holds it together then we've got this additional nut. Now there are lots of radiator valves which have this on them and uh, they will look slightly different but in general they, they have two nuts on and you can just nip that nut up and that will stop it from leaking out of the spindle on the top. Now I'm going to show you what's inside this. I'm just going to undo this, this nut and we'll see that inside here is a black graphite fiber washer. Now what we can do there is to get some uh, silicon grease, put it on top of the black fiber washer, then put the nut back on again, do it up tight and that will lubricate the spindle and hopefully stop it from leaking. I've made a video on how to service and maintain these valves. But first I'm going to show you a whole bunch of photos and videos of radiator valves which have been leaking. Now if any of your radiator valves look like any of these in the coming clips then there's a good chance that that radiator valve is leaking and that's enough to drop your pressure and stop your boiler from working. So starting off with this radiator valve you can see how there's some green on the nut which is near to the radiator. It didn't take a lot to take a little bit of tissue paper, dab it on the bottom there and I could see there was a leak. Now over a couple of weeks that will drop your pressure on your system and stop your boiler from working. Be careful if you start adjusting radiator valves. I turned this valve and it started leaking on the top but it was just a case of nipping up the gland nut and it was all fine. Now you can see with this radiator valve um, this one was leaking and uh, you got all the green on the pipe work there. So when I took the valve head off there, there was water on the top there but as it runs down the radiator valve and onto the pipe it, it slowly evaporates. So there was no drips on the carpet so the lady didn't even realize that the, the radiator valve was leaking. All it was a case of doing was just tightening up the gland nuts. So if you see green staining on any of your pipe work there's something you should definitely check up on to make sure that you haven't got any leaks there. So in this property the tenant was regularly topping up the boiler and it turned out to be this radiator valve. You can see all the scale and all the green all over the valve and uh, it was just a case of replacing that valve and uh, the leak was sorted. This is a thermostatic valve. There's not much we can do with this. You can see all the rust on the top there and it's all running down the pipework there. Do not go pushing that pin on the top because it's likely to start leaking and you probably won't be able to stop it. So all we can do with this valve is to replace it for a new one. So I told you some radiator valves have gland nuts. Now this radiator valve looks like it has a gland nut just here. Now I see this radiator valve quite a lot. Whenever people turn it, these tend to start leaking. So uh, I, I try not to touch these valves, but so this is not a gland nut. It's got an O-ring in there and it's a case of uh, either replacing the O-ring or replacing the valve if it starts leaking. Now this is another very common leak which I see. Um, this plug has been leaking and you can quite clearly see the rust line running down the radiator. And finally we have this radiator valve here. 
Now the customer said to me that this radiator valve had been leaking and uh, you can see all the scale on the radiator valve there uh, but he said it wasn't leaking from there uh, he said it was leaking from this point here and you can see on the floor there there's a little pot he's got down there to catch any dripping water but it actually turns out that it's, uh, this cap here is leaking so uh, it doesn't take a lot just to touch your finger on there and you can see it was wet so it's just a case of taking that uh, plug out cleaning the surface up and replacing the o-ring now i thought i'd take a look at the thermostat at the same time so uh, unscrew this um uh, the retaining nilled um, part of the thermostat head and i find that the thermostat head is actually completely broken so uh, that head's not doing anything at all um and uh, again you can see all the uh, green on the top of the thermostatic radiator valve um, and there's a lot of scale around the valve also so that shows that this valve has been leaking by pushing the pin up and down i could do a check to see if it's still leaking or not so going back to the plug on the top of the radiator i'm just going to file this surface down make sure that there's no loose uh, material on there any rust on there that's going to cause it to leak so that's uh, nice and cleaned off then i'm just going to use a bit of emery just to finish it off and then uh, we're going to put the plug in see that's nice and shiny now no sign of any loose rust here's the plug got a nice new o-ring on there and i'm going to just going to do this up really nice and tight because uh, we don't want any leaks on that and uh, there we go that's that leak fixed as you can see it's all nice and shiny and then down at the bottom here the customer didn't want to change this valve so we've uh, we just cleaned it all up and hopefully that valve won't leak anymore now I said I was going to show you how to service or stop a leak on a radiator valve with a gland nut. So uh, here we have the radiator valve. This hasn't been leaking, but I'm just showing you what I would normally do if this valve was leaking. Make sure you put a pot down and a towel to catch any water, because uh, there's a good chance when you do this, you will have water dripping out of the radiator valve. So, uh, But um, in general, it's nothing to worry about. So first of all, I'm going to wind this valve down to make sure I know how many turns uh, to turn it back to when I finish. So that went in three turns. So when I put it all back together, I'm going to open it back up three turns. Now I've taken the screw off. I'm going to remove this little cap. Uh, you can use a long one of those pair of pliers if you can't get that one off, if it has one. And then I'm just going to clean this off and make sure there's no dirt because we don't want to get any dirt down inside this uh, gland nut. Uh, then I'm going to undo it with my adjustable spanners uh, like so. In general, these aren't too tight, so uh, it, it should come off fairly easily. And there's the gland nut. And now I'm going to get a nice good blob of silicon grease and uh, uh, splodge that right in there into the, where the gland nut is. And like I said, there's a good chance when you do this, you're going to have water dripping out through that gland nut. If you're at all worried, then obviously do not do this. But uh, um, it is fairly straightforward. Now I'm just going to wind that valve up and down to uh, lubricate that uh, spindle and get that, that grease right down inside there. And I'm going to do with that nut up a little bit more just to squidge it in a little bit more. And again, I'm just going to wind it up and down uh, several times just to lubricate that. And again, just tighten it up a little more. A couple more turns. And now I'm happy with that that's, that's nice and free now. I can feel that's really nice and loose to go in and out. Now it's going to nip this nut up like so. And there you go. So it's pretty straightforward. So hopefully if you have a leak on the radiator valve and you can just nip that gland nut up, that's helped you sort that out. Now I'm just going to screw that cap all the way down and then turn it back the three turns so it's in the same position as where I started so that the system will stay balanced uh, if it was ever balanced in the first place, that is. So I'm just going to reassemble the cap, put the screw back in and uh, there we go. I hope that helped. And lastly, what to do if your radiator valve nut connections are leaking. Once again, we're going to make sure we've got a bowl and a towel down. So if either of the nuts on your radiator valve start leaking, there's not so much we can do with these. Quite often, I would take the whole valve off and start again. But we can see if this nut is a little loose. Um, and if it feels like it's a little loose and I can turn it, then maybe I may try turning it. But to be aware, like I said, if we turn it, it's nut, and it might actually make the joint worse and uh, it starts leaking even more. It's exactly the same for the nut connecting the valve to the radiator. Uh, if we start turning it, it uh, may start leaking even more. But more importantly, we want to make sure that we hold this valve so it cannot twist. Otherwise, we may end up with a leak here or even kink in the pipe. And then you're going to have two leaks to sort out plus a kinked pipe. So always make sure this valve is supported by using some kind of spanner like this and hold that valve very still and tighten that nut. But like I said, you might end up with an even worse leak. So 
Uh, be very careful when you start trying to tighten up the, these nuts. Always consider you may have to take the entire valve off and start it all over again. If you need to replace your radiator valve, then click the link in the description below for my video on how to replace radiator valves, because there's a lot more to it than just undoing a couple of nuts. Another reason for losing pressure would be if you have leaking pipes. Now this customer had a radiator fitted. Unfortunately, the fitter made a bad job of the pipe work and uh, the customer had water dripping through their ceiling. Uh, now the customer has put a whole load of silicon sealant on this joint to try and stop it from leaking, but you can see there's water dripping out there. Uh, so now I've just trying to pull this joint apart and you can see it actually comes apart quite easily. So it was never even soldered properly in the first place. If you find leaking pipe work, the only thing to do is just to cut the whole lot out. Don't try repairing it, just cut the whole lot out and then start again. You can see that's what I've done here. I've cut all the joints and we've got a fresh pipe work in there. So I know that bit of pipe work will not leak now. Again, if you're losing pressure in your system, another possible uh, place is the automatic air vent. Uh, this is a uh, device uh, usually in, in the boiler or it can be somewhere else on your system. And this device, as the name says, lets out air automatically. But over time, they quite often fail and they start letting out water also. You can see this one's been dripping water. It's all scaled up now. It's probably sealed itself up. But uh, um, in the past, it's obviously been leaking. Here's another one that's dripping water. You can see the water is actually coming out right now. Um, I'm just going to close this, this down, uh, not too, too tight, just going to close it up and stop the water from dripping out. Um, in my opinion, they're only needed when the system is filled up or if you drain the system down to let the air out to get the boiler working. Uh, but after that, they, they can be closed. Uh, so if you're losing pressure, that's a possible place you could be losing that. Uh, here's another one here, which is that uh, you can see there's lots of scale around it. Unfortunately, a lot of these automatic air vents are actually inside the boiler and the only way to get to them is to remove the case cover. If you remove the case cover, that means you're breaking the seal which seals the gas combustion area and you are only allowed to remove this cover if you're a gas registered engineer. So unfortunately, a lot of these you'll need to call an engineer if you think that is leaking. But having said that, if you've got water dripping out of your boiler, then you should be calling a gas engineer anyway. And finally, I'm just going to round up with a whole bunch of leaks which are found on various systems. Here's an interesting one. Here's a 28 mil magna clean that was up in a, a loft and you can see it sat in a tray which is full of water. So I got to that one just in the nick of time. Here's a temperature sensor that was leaking which I had to replace uh, and that was causing them to lose pressure. Uh, here we have some pipe work that was leaking. Again, that had to be replaced. Here we have a magnetic filter which is up in a loft, the TF1, and you can see the uh, drips on the floor there. And it turned out this one had a cracked lid and it needs to be replaced. When I serviced this boiler, I also serviced the MagnaClean and you can see now on the MagnaClean handles there are drips of water and you can see the puddle underneath. So uh, these valves, after they've been turned, they started dripping and with these particular valves, there's nothing I can do to stop the water from coming out. There's no gland nuts. Here's a fairly obvious one. The radiator has started leaking. Now I could keep on showing you lots of photos of uh, more leaks, but I think you get the general picture. If you have a leak on your system, it's going to drop your pressure. Even if it's just a very small leak, just a, a couple of drips a day, which would then mean you probably won't even see a, a drip of water because the water is going to evaporate before it uh, drips onto anything. But over time, that's going to drop your pressure in your system. If any of you have ever had a dripping tap, you'll know by the end of the day, you've got a bowl full of water. So it only takes a couple of drips a day, and by the end of the week, you've, you've lost a pint of water. And that's enough to drop your pressure on your boiler and stop it from working. Now, right at the start of this video, I told you that continuously topping up your boiler is really bad for your system. Now, the reason for this is that every time you add fresh water to your system, you also add fresh oxygen, which is in the water. Now, most people would know that radiators are made out of steel and that fresh water will rust steel. Even if you had inhibitor in the system, this will be diluted away so it's doing absolutely nothing. Now the fresh water which you add into your system will be rusting away your radiators. That rust turns into that black sludge which you see inside central heating systems. The black sludge is called magnetite and it destroys boilers. It will greatly reduce the life of your boiler and its efficiency. It sticks to everything in your system, gradually building up a coating until it completely blocks it. 
like this pipe inside a Velian Ecomax boiler, or this pump where you can see all the veins are full up with little bits of magnetite blocking it completely. I've now cleaned the pump and you can see all the veins are completely clear. To protect the boiler from magnetite, which may be flowing around the system, we fit magnetic filters. These collect the magnetite and help prevent it from getting into the boiler. I believe all boiler manufacturers are now asking for magnetic filters to be fitted when a boiler is installed. If one is not fitted, you may find it evaluates your guarantee. Installing a magnetic filter is a really good idea, whether you've got a new boiler or an old boiler, it'll help protect it. If you want to know more about magnetic filters, I'll leave a link in the description below. And finally, here's the main heat exchanger. Even after power flushing it, I still couldn't get flow through it. So I took it out, I've cut it in half to see what I could find. You can see how some of the tubes are completely blocked with magnetite. So this means you cannot get any flow through the main heat exchanger. The main heat exchanger is the engine of your boiler. And if that becomes blocked, your boiler will no longer work. This is normally the most expensive part in your boiler and you'll need to get it cleaned out, replaced, or even the boiler replaced. So you can now see why refilling your boiler regularly is really bad for your system. So you should call an engineer before you get serious problems. So how often should you be topping up your boiler? Well, it's recommended between once and twice a year. Any more than that, and you're gonna be diluting your inhibitor and you may be causing excessive corrosion. And we know what corrosion does to your system. And finally, what to do if you cannot find the leak? Well, firstly, you wanna just double check everything and make sure it's not leaking. I find using a bit of kitchen roll or toilet paper, dabbing it into any area where you think it's leaking, just use the edge of it and it will show up clearly if there is a leak with a mark like this. Now it's always better to fix a leak, but sometimes that's just not practical. And that's the time I always use leak sealer. Leak sealer is a solution which you add into your central heating system. You could put that in through the magnetic filter or into a radiator. And I've made a separate video for this, so you can find that in the link down below. Leak sealer is something I would use only as a last resort, but in the places where I have used it, it's been very successful for stopping those smaller leaks where people are topping up the boilers maybe four or five times a year. Right, that's it. Now, I hope that uh, all made sense to you. I hope you managed to find that uh, pesky leak that you are looking for. Um, if you do decide to work on this yourself, please be really careful because you don't want water pouring for your ceiling and you're not being able to get your boiler working. So always call a professional, always call a gas registered engineer to do any work on your central heating system. Okay, uh, this video initially was gonna be a bit longer because I found an additional leak on, on a boiler, but it's gonna make the video a bit too long. So I've made a separate video for that. So if you wanna see that video, you can click on the link at the uh, end of this video, or you can uh, click in the description below. Okay, so don't forget to click subscribe if you're new to my channel. You can click like, share me with your friends. And if you're feeling really generous, you can leave a donation that will help me make more videos, which will hopefully help you. Okay, bye for now and uh, keep watching.